So now we're going to move on to actually stating, justifying, and applying the integral test. And the, the statement itself is, is pretty anodyne. Uh, the specific details, right, are going to be assumed to be true when we work with the functions that we're working with. It won't be, it won't be that hard um, to apply the conditions of this theorem. Um, so in general, yes, this will apply to what we're working with. Um, but we'll just point out the the few cases where the problems that we're encountering are going to have one or two things that are slightly different. And that includes this, this statement right here um, about the interval on which the function is defined. So let's get this out of the way, right? Our sequence that defines the terms of the series, we want the function that defines those terms to be continuous, positive, so we don't want any alternating parts of it. Um, like we saw in previous videos, we have some alternating series that, you know, could be bouncing between the x-axis and not. This one's going to be, strictly speaking, entirely in the first quadrant. And we want it to be decreasing. Um, so that's going to be really important. We know that if this was not a decreasing function, then it couldn't possibly represent a convergent series because that would mean the series is growing as you go further and further out, and of course it can't converge, right? Okay, so that out of the way, the statement about we want it to be defined on over uh, 1 to infinity just means it's in the first quadrant. We're going to start at 1 because that's where we start counting. Okay, so there's two pieces to this here. The first is if the improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx so the real valued, um, sorry, not the real, not the real valued, the function of the real number that corresponds to the sequence, which is a function on a natural number. If this integral converges, then the series of a to the n, or a sub n, sorry, also converges which is what we want the statement basically to, to be, right? We want us to have some guarantee that there's a condition that tells us when the series converges. And on the other hand, if this improper integral diverges, um, then the series does as well. So this is actually really nice, and I feel like it takes a long time to appreciate the power of this because it's not just a test for convergence, it's also a test for divergence, right? So we have a a one-to-one -one correspondence between the improper integral and the series, which in other words is just saying sometimes it's better to not think in discrete terms, right, term-wise, but to better to think in broader continuous terms. Right. Okay, before we actually justify this theorem, and again, justify means I'm not really going to prove it, I'm just going to you know go over why it must be true. Um, there are some special caveats here, right? So some notes that we have to make. Um, namely, this is not a computational method. This does not give you the series. So... The integral is very rarely, in fact, more likely, more, more accurate of a statement would be something like, is almost never directly going to give you the value of the series. A good example of this is the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x squared equals 1, the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared over 6, right? Which we claimed. I mean, it's not, uh, we don't know this for a fact, I guess. Um, but this is an example of where that, that discrepancy bears out, right? Um, one other thing, right? You start with the improper integral. It doesn't go backwards either, which is weird, right? Um, so... Knowing something about the series isn't necessarily going to tell you something about the 
uh, improper integral. In some cases, it is directly the same, but, and that's because of this piece right here. Anyway, we're not really gonna see any examples of that, so you don't even have to worry about that. So let's actually justify this. So because the theorem has two cases, right? One in which we're testing for convergence and one for which we're testing for divergence, right? Um, <clears throat> it's actually, it's actually great. So with the first case, right? Convergent case. We, we, we know that the, um, the, the punchline is that the series converges, right? So we have some series represented in um, the heights of these bars, or the really the areas of these bars. Okay, so I have my a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, Right, and we're adding those together. A sub four, and so on. And for this specific um, example, right, what we really want to think about is if we place these areas, right, um, where we're thinking about the function defined on them, right, we want the left corner here to be zero, zero. And so what we're really saying is, we think about the discrete sequence, right? As being A1 is um, the function applied to one. A2 is the function applied to two. A3 is the function applied to three and so on. Right? Exactly what we want. It's exactly what we're saying, right? Um, in the statement of the theorem, right? It's the function of a real number applied to just the integer values. Okay? So really what we're thinking about here is think of the sequence a sub n as the floor function on on f, f of x, right? Um, so then, and I'm, I'm just going to convince you of one piece here, right? Just one piece for any one term, okay? Assuming the things that we want to be true, right? We have that the um, partial sum up to that point, right? So really I should be, um, this is just the first term, right? I'm actually be the, right? And then this is the, the blue area represents the partial sum, and the red area represents the uh, definite integral, okay? So the partial sum up to that nth term in the series, okay? Not equals, but is gonna be strictly less than the integral from one to n of f x dx, okay? So the, I wanna point out that this is a definite integral, it's not improper. I want to point out that this is the nth partial sum. But this limit, I mean, this inequality is true, right? Because the function is f is continuous, positive, and decreasing on that interval, right? Okay, so. Here's the important part, which is 
Because this is true for the entire interval from 1 to infinity, it bears out that as n goes to infinity, the limit preserves the inequality. In other words, the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum is going to be less than the limit as n approaches infinity, the integral from 1 to n of f of x dx. This would not be true if we didn't have those conditions that we started with, right? The continuity, the positivity, the decreasing nature of the function. And here's the really important part. This right here is the infinite series, right? Because we defined it to converge or to diverge, depending on what the limit of the partial sums sequence is. And this side is an improper integral from 1 to infinity. We have shown really what, what this is. Why have we shown what this is? Because we're going to assume in the convergent case, okay, that this right here is finite. Right? Cool. So then, that means the infinite series is also finite. It converges. Okay. So that's the convergent case. We can do something similar where we're thinking about the um, divergent case. And this one's, it, it feels like it's, we're saying the same thing, but we're not. Um, and that's because we're just going to shift the, uh, the series by one term. So in the divergent case, it really doesn't matter which case we're talking about. In the, whatever um, happens to the improper integral is going to affect what happens to the series in this case. Um, so let me show you the, the visualization here. So now we're going to take the A series that we're going to actually find to diverge. Okay. That goes on forever, right? So here's our A1, our A2, right? These are the areas underneath each um, for each rectangle. So these are the first few terms of the series. And this time we're going to think about the left hand corners, okay? of the bars, right? Which if you think about as also, we're thinking about left and right Riemann sums, you're on the right track. Okay, so the same thing here that we want is you we want it to be true, except uh, zero comma zero is over here. Yeah, I know, it's, it's weird. So we're starting basically at a different point, um, but it still bears out that A1, is f of 1, a2, is f of 2, a3, is f of 3, and so on, right? Okay, so we can see, at least in the finite case, right, that if we're starting at 1, the first few terms give us a partial sum, right? And that is going to be strictly larger than the definite integral. So I've highlighted in two different colors now, right? So we see, and these are finite values, right? So um, the integral from 1 to n, okay, of f of x dx is less than the partial sum from k to 1 uh, to, from k equals 1 to n, okay? So just by shifting that, we've 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 uh, shown this to be true, okay. So it's another way of thinking about the the relationship between the Riemann sum and the uh, partial sum. And in the same sense, okay, as n goes to infinity, the properties of the function f and the way that limits work 
give us the limit preserving the inequality, which is the limit as n goes to infinity. I mean, you know the punchline at this point, right? You know what, what we're going for, which is that the, oh, okay, k equals 1 to n of a sub k. All right, so first of all, okay, my partial sum The area, the blue area, is an overestimate for the red area. And then the long run, right, the improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx is going to be strictly less than the sum of the actual infinite series, right? So, And because this is the div div divergent case, I'm so sorry, I couldn't pronounce divergent for a second. Because this is the divergent case, this is infinite. And because there's nothing finite bigger than an infinite something, um, then the series is larger than something infinite. It means it must be infinite. It, it diverges, right? So that's, that's basically it. Okay, so then let's talk about how to apply the integral test using the integral test. So we don't have to start actually um, from one to infinity. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, you can start at zero. You can start at two. Um, that shifting that we did in the showing the, the cases that applies just as well whether you're talking about starting at one or starting at ten. Right. Um, okay. So. How do you actually apply it? Right, we're going to start with some series that you're going to test. It's going to have some uh, term, some expression for the terms a sub n um, that we hope are going to give us some f of x uh, based on a sub n um, that we hope is, is going to satisfy the conditions that we need f is continuous, it's positive, it's defined on at least 1 to infinity, maybe some smaller interval from, I don't know, maybe 10 to infinity. We don't usually deal with those cases, it's fine. Um, so we're going to determine the convergence of the, so then determine whether the corresponding improper integral converges or diverges and that will tell us directly whether the series converges or diverges. And either way, you've shown the answer for the full series. For first, k terms do not matter. It's the tail that matters. Okay, so let's see some examples. So um, we're going to see two examples here. So we'll cover the first one. Determine whether the series n from n equal 1 to infinity of 2 over 5n minus 1 converges or diverges. Okay, this is really just a yes or no question, um, but you do need to justify it because um, that we're in the business of math, right? Math needs to be justified. So don't just say converges or diverges. You should say it converges because, and you should have a, a nice backup um, something that, that backs up, backs you up, right? You need justification. Okay, so here's how we're going to work on this. We're going to take f of x to be the function 2 over 5x minus 1. So what are some things we know about this function? Right? It's defined over a larger interval than this, but it's at least defined on 1 fifth to infinity, right? It's decreasing on the same interval. Okay. And we know it's continuous. It's a it it's a rational function, so except for at the holes, right? Then you have um 
or I should say holes or asymptotes, except for at the discontinuities, this is continuous by definition. Okay, great. Um, so we can use this over one to infinity, okay? So we're gonna calculate, we calculate the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx. So the limit as, and you can use whatever notation you want. It, you can use the, the notation that we set up before, or you can even use the n notation. It's not literally the same thing, but give or take an n, and it actually does end up being the same thing. I mean, let's just go with it. Let's just go with this, okay? The limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from one to b of two over five x minus one dx, okay? So determining the integral here, not that hard because we know that this is a, um, we're gonna get a logarithmic expression here, right? Um, if we are going to do that, then we should use a u substitution so u equals 5x minus 1 to u equals 5dx. You know the deal, right? You're going to end up dividing by 1 fifth. And there's that pesky 2 in front as well. So we're going to have 2 fifths natural log of 5x minus 1. Of course, this is positive, so it doesn't matter. We don't need the absolute value mark of bars there. From 1 to b, limit as b approaches infinity. Okay. Um, then we get the limit as b approaches infinity of two-fifths times ln of 5b minus 1 minus ln of uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. ln of 4. So here's the rub, though. Uh, logarithmic functions, they explode as you go out to infinity very slowly, but they do. Um, so this diverges. by the integral test. The corresponding series that we started with diverges. Cool, huh? Okay, let's see one more. Because we that was a pretty anodyne one. We kind of could have could have felt that it was going to go that way. Um, some other ones, though, need a little bit more help. So let's see this. Okay, so uh, to determine whether the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n ln of n converges or diverges. Okay, so here our relevant function is f of x equals 1 over x ln of x, okay? Um, so what do we know about this? Not a whole lot, except, um, it is defined over, um, you can't plug in zero, you can't plug in one, um, but you can plug in anything greater than one. So it is defined over two to infinity, close bracket at two, uh, which is, and it is decreasing, it is decreasing on that same interval. It is also continuous over that interval. Um, ln, just ignoring the discontinuity at x equals zero, um, is continuous the whole rest of the way. So is one over x. Multiplying those two together doesn't change anything, right? Okay, so this means we can apply the integral test. So then let's uh, see what the corresponding improper integral, and again, we have to start from two, not from one, but that's okay, because we're really starting from the same start point anyway, and that's fine. And again here, we're gonna probably wanna do some, um, some interesting, fun things you might see this and think, oh, I'm going to need to do some integration by parts stuff. But, you know, you don't usually have to go that far. And here in particular, it's actually very nice. If you let u be ln of x, du is, you know, 
uh, 1 over x dx. And you'll see that you actually end up with du times 1 over u. So that's, that's actually really nice. So the limit as b goes to infinity, okay, the integral from, and you should transform the limits, right? So ln of 2, ln of infinity, or I should say ln of b. And du over u. Okay, so the nice thing here is that's obviously a natural log. Uh, integral. So the natural log of u from ln of 2 to ln of b, you can see where we're going here. Okay, so ln of ln of b, minus ln of ln of 2. Okay, bizarre, but you know, not unheard of. Okay, Here's the thing, ln of ln of b diverges very slowly, okay? Think about how slowly ln diverges, and then you plug it back into itself, it, diverge, it goes to infinity, it ultimately does, right? They're both continuous functions, and if one goes to infinity, then the other one has to as well. Um, that's a uh, a way to think about it that isn't, I'm hand-waving it a little bit. You're not seeing it because you can't see my hands, but I am hand-waving. Mm -hmm. um, but it does eventually go to infinity. And so this means this limit doesn't exist. It, it This improper integral diverges. So the sum also diverges. By the integral test. Crazy. It diverges very slowly. Okay, I want you to know that. It does. Very, very slowly. But it does. So, um, that's that's really the, the utility of this, um, this technique. In the last video that we're going to cover for this section, we're just going to talk about how the integral test actually gives us a remainder estimate. And basically it tells us um, how far out we need to go in the series um, in order to estimate up to some digit of accuracy, right? Um, and it all has to do with the fact that the difference between the improper integral and the series gets tinier and tinier and tinier as you go further and further out in the tail. And so you just need to go out until two of a far enough term in the series, convert that into an improper integral. I'm getting ahead of myself. Wait for the next video.